What's going on? My name is Robert and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This video is all about the torque signal circuit in the 4L60E transmission. We're going to cover things like where it comes from, how it's created, and some outside influences on this torque signal circuit. If you haven't done so already, you may want to go back and watch some of the videos leading up to this one. In the past, we've covered videos such as how the pump draws fluid in and pushes fluid out, how the pressure regulator valve establishes line pressure. We've learned that line pressure is used to apply the clutches, and it's this line pressure that keeps the clutches from slipping excessively, because when clutches slip excessively, they burn up, and when clutches burn up, you have a transmission failure. We've also learned that line pressure varies from mild to wild, depending on engine load that is placed in the transmission. We've learned how the PR valve is able to establish a base line pressure of roughly 55 PSI. We've learned how the PR valve is able to elevate line pressures with the transmission in both drive and reverse. One of the ways that the PR valve can increase line pressure is with the use of the oil coming from the torque signal circuit. If you're a bit confused by this recap, you can easily get up to speed by checking out the entire video series. Links to those videos can be found in the video description down below. The torque signal circuit fluid pressure acts on this portion of the boost valve. That pressure can vary anywhere from zero up to 115 PSI. And this oil pressure comes from the EPC solenoid. EPC stands for electronic pressure control. And the EPC solenoid, just so you know, is sometimes referred to as a force motor. In the next segment, we're gonna learn how the EPC solenoid works. But for the meantime, we're gonna continue to discover where the oil comes from. With that said, we're gonna take a big step back and go to the oil pan and we're gonna work our way from there. A quick heads up, the hydraulic fluid flow in the 4L60E is complex. There are a whole bunch of circuits within this transmission, but we're gonna take the most direct route from the oil pan to the EPC solenoid for the sake of brevity and for the sake of getting the most out of this lesson on the torque signal circuit. When the engine is started, the 4060E oil pump rotates at engine speed. When the pump operates, it simultaneously sucks fluid in and pushes fluid out. The oil that's in the oil pan is drawn through the filter and into the pump. It's pushed out of the pump through this port. At this point, the oil becomes what is known as line pressure. This is pressurized oil, happens to be the highest pressure within the automatic transmission at any given point in time. The line pressure oil makes its way through this screen and around this corner. Here it passes the pressure regulator valve as the oil flows towards the bottom of the pump. When the oil leaves the pump, it enters the transmission case here and it makes its way down this channel to this portion of the transmission case. The oil makes its way through the separator plate and into this portion of the valve body. From here, the oil travels across the valve body like so. It then makes its way through the separator plate and back into the transmission case. Travels like so. Again, it goes through the separator plate and into the valve body. This time, the line pressure fluid immediately encounters the AFL valve. AFL stands for actuator feed limit. Another name for an actuator is solenoid, so you could call this valve train the solenoid feed limit. The AFL valve is a simple valve train that acts like a mini pressure regulator valve. As we know from previous videos in this series, line pressure is the highest operating hydraulic pressure within the automatic transmission. The AFL valve takes that high line pressure and regulates it down to a pressure anywhere from 55 to 115 PSI. That lowered pressure is used to feed all but one of the solenoids on the 4L60E. If you're anything like me, you're probably wondering what is that one solenoid that's not fed this AFL pressure? Well, we gotta stay on track with this video, but in a future video, I'll cover uh, solenoid operation and dedicate a video to uh, how the AFL valve works. When I get around to making those videos, I'll provide a shortcut right here 
And I'll also put a link in the video description down below. The AFL fluid pressure leaves the AFL valve and heads this way. It then goes through the separator plate and into the transmission case where it travels a very short distance and goes back through the separator plate, this time through the EPC solenoid screen and back into the valve body. The AFL fluid travels a very short distance where it encounters the EPC solenoid. As previously discussed, the AFL fluid pressure ranges anywhere from 55 to 115 PSI. As it encounters the EPC solenoid, the EPC solenoid takes that AFL fluid pressure and it regulates it anywhere from 0 PSI up to 115 PSI. The oil pressure coming out of the EPC solenoid is called the torque signal. The torque signal oil pressure exits the EPC solenoid and instantly goes through the separator plate and into the transmission case. Travels through the case, like so, and back through the separator plate and crosses this section of the valve body. The oil flows once again through the separator plate and into the transmission case and heads towards the pump. Once the oil makes its way into the pump, it flows across this channel and through this small passageway. From here, the oil can make its way into the boost sleeve and get behind the boost valve and push the boost valve towards the pressure regulator valve. You gotta remember, it's this torque signal circuit, the oil coming from the EPC solenoid, it's this torque signal circuit that influences what line pressure is ultimately gonna be set at. Let's do a quick recap of this oil flow. The oil starts in the oil pan, it's drawn through the filter and sucked into the pump. While the oil makes its way through the pump, the oil becomes pressurized. It turns into line pressure. That line pressure goes from the pump down to the AFL valve. The AFL valve acts as a mini regulator and it takes that high line pressure and lowers it to a pressure that ranges anywhere from 55 PSI to 115 PSI. And that pressure becomes AFL pressure. The AFL fluid goes from the AFL valve over to the EPC solenoid. The EPC solenoid modifies that oil pressure and turns it into a pressure of anywhere from zero to 115 PSI. As the oil leaves the EPC solenoid, it becomes known as the torque signal oil pressure. That torque signal oil pressure goes from the EPC solenoid up to the boost valve. You may have noticed that the oil pressure as it moves throughout the transmission, at least on paper, it changes color. Now, if you're ever to look at a hydraulic diagram for the 4060E or any automatic transmission, generally speaking, red typically stands for line pressure. This brownish orange color stands for AFL pressure and yellow stands for torque signal. During our journey from the oil pan all the way to the EPC solenoid, we discovered that there are a number of pressure regulators along the way, starting with the pressure regulator valve, the AFL valve, and then ultimately the EPC solenoid. However, the AFL valve and the pressure regulator valve, they regulate pressure by using a simple valve train that's comprised of valves and springs. But the EPC solenoid works in a different manner. More on that in the next segment. Explaining how the EPC solenoid works is a bit involved. So for the meantime, in this presentation, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. But I will, however, dedicate a video solely to the EPC solenoid in the near future. When that video gets posted, you'll be able to find a shortcut to it up here and down below in the video description. The EPC solenoid is an electronic pressure regulator. The AFL fluid pressure enters the solenoid here and the fluid exits the solenoid here as torque signal oil pressure. The 4L60E transmission computer rapidly turns the solenoid on and off in order to get the solenoid to function as intended. The percentage of time that the EPC solenoid is in the on state is referred to as duty cycle. So for example, a 50% duty cycle means that the solenoid is on 50% of the time and naturally it's off 50% of the time. A 5% duty cycle means that the solenoid is on for only 5% of the time and it's off for 95% of the time. The EPC solenoid happens to be a normally open solenoid. What that means 
is when there's no power applied to the solenoid, that hydraulic pressure is able to flow freely through the solenoid. A 5% duty cycle results in maximum AFL pressure passing through the EPC solenoid and into the torque signal circuit. So in this case, if the AFL pressure happens to be 115 PSI, we can then assume that the torque signal circuit is also 115 PSI. Conversely, a 50% duty cycle will result in no AFL fluid pressure passing through the EPC solenoid, resulting in a torque signal oil pressure of zero PSI. The computer will typically command an EPC solenoid duty cycle of anywhere from 5% up to roughly 50% and anywhere in between those two values depending on vehicle driving conditions. In the next segment of this video, we're going to cover the outside influences on the EPC solenoid. The EPC solenoid is directly controlled by the computer. This fluid pressure is known as torque signal. This pressure varies in direct proportion to engine load. As engine load increases, the pressure rises. As engine load decreases, the pressure falls. So with no engine load, zero PSI is generated. However, at max engine loads, 115 PSI is generated. As we can see, engine load is a major influence on the output of the EPC solenoid. There are several load sensing devices located on the vehicle that the 4L60E computer must monitor at all times. For example, the TPS sensor, the MAP sensor, and the MAF sensor. TPS is an abbreviation for throttle position sensor. The TPS sensor is typically located on the throttle body of the engine. The TPS sensor monitors driver demand, specifically the movement of the gas pedal. The movement of the pedal affects the movement of the linkage and the throttle blades that the TPS is attached to. As the driver demands more of the engine, the engine creates more power and puts the transmission under more load. MAP is an abbreviation for Manifold Absolute Pressure. The MAP sensor is basically a digitized vacuum gauge that reads manifold vacuum. The MAP sensor can be bolted directly to the engine's manifold or be bolted to the firewall and attached to the engine's manifold with a vacuum hose. Engine vacuum is high at idle and decreases as the throttle blades open. MAF is an abbreviation for mass airflow. The mass airflow sensor measures the amount of air entering the engine. The mass airflow sensor is located downstream of the air filter, which helps to keep the sensor clean. At idle, very little air comes through the MAF sensor. As engine speed increases, the amount of air coming through the MAF sensor increases proportionally. The computer is constantly monitoring these sensors in order to determine engine load. It uses that information to determine how much line pressure is needed to prevent the clutches from slipping. The EPC solenoid is used to regulate that torque signal oil pressure that acts on the PR valve train. That pressure has a direct effect on the regulating of the line pressure. I'm really excited about the next episode in this series. We're gonna be talking about problems with the pressure regulator valve train. You gotta remember that the PR valve is responsible for regulating line pressure. And that line pressure is used to apply the clutches. It applies them and it keeps them from slipping because when the clutches slip, they burn up, resulting in transmission failure. So you're not gonna wanna miss this episode. So if you haven't done so already, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell too, so you don't miss this upcoming video or any others like it. As always, I would love to hear from you. You can drop me a line in the comment section down below. Let me know what questions you've got, uh, any aha moments you had while watching this video. I would love to hear about those. Uh, I would also really like to hear about you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Are you new to turning wrenches? Or are you a seasoned rebuilder? Or perhaps even a diagnostician? Or maybe you're somewhere in between and you've rebuilt a transmission or two? Drop me a line down below and let me know. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for this video. I will catch you in the next one.